Aloha. We are here in the beautiful Hawaiian island of Maui and I have a very special guest with me today. We have Dave from Black Magic Design who is the head of strategy for DaVinci Systems and we are going to chat a lot about uh, the DaVinci Resolve platform which is one of the most popular video editing softwares uh, which is kind of used by professional video editors it's good for color grading and everything so uh, please join me in welcoming dev to the conversation hi dev hi yeah how are you doing i'm good, doing good. good and excited to chat with you so uh, you know kind of uh, during the uh, pandemic there was a major shift in terms of content consumption and content creation mm. right a lot of people were sitting at home uh, consuming a lot of content and while a lot of people were consuming content there was also a need for creating content right and uh, this is where tools like davinci resolve comes into picture where it is empowering all the content creators to create different kinds of content right whether it is reels or whether it is uh, your full form of content or some people also got into film making right making yeah. those cinematic videos yeah so uh, and here we are at uh, the Snapdragon summit where Qualcomm just announced the Snapdragon X Elite compute platform and one of the key things over here was uh, that i noticed lots of partners coming in talking about you know uh, the apps that they are bringing to this platform and one of them happens to be DaVinci Resolve as well so uh, my question to begin with is why is it exciting for content creators uh do you know uh, have uh davinci resolve on this platform uh right from day one right yeah well i thank you for uh, asking me to do this i guess i'd say this uh we make hardware and software for people to do everything having to do with content creation right so we're not just the the single application we make cameras we make the a10 switchers but people do broadcast kind of things on the web and our application lets people do everything creative from capturing, editing, color grading, visual effects, motion graphics, and audio. So you asked about Snapdragon and why that's cool. But the reason it's cool is because of the fact that we're pretty much platform agnostic, but on the Windows side, portability at low power has been a problem at times. And I right. think we're gonna see that whole space heating up a lot. Um, There's some other vendors that have done some great stuff in that space. So we have an opportunity here to uh, make that kind of uh, democratization, if you will, for people to be able to do stuff in important, you know, we could be sitting out on this patio doing some work for several hours. And so that's one of the things that's really exciting about it. And right. that it's a performant platform, so that's great. Yeah. So uh, if you look at video editing software that's available on Windows, that's available on Mac, but when it comes to and windows Linux too <laughs> yeah when it comes to windows uh, it was pre, uh, until now it was available for the x86 platform and now yeah. you have a completely different platform altogether that's right so how uh, difficult is it to kind of you know optimize it for each and every operating system each and every platform yeah that's a good question uh, look this is an arm based um, processor and we've done that kind of thing on apple's m series processors but in terms of difficulty, that really depends on the maturity of the platform when they're doing that work. In the very beginning of things, you know, you have drivers, you have the beginnings of an API, and you're just getting things to work. And right now we're past the very beginnings of that stage. But to get the best performance, that involves fine tuning for the platform. And that can be a multi-month process uh, as the senior engineers from uh, the platform provider or from Microsoft or from our company interact with each other to do that work. Great. And uh, one of the things that you showcased yesterday on stage was the power of NPU, right? Yeah. When it comes to tools like magic masking, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, how does all that optimization happen in terms of getting peak performance while, you know, keeping low power consumption? Mm. So the, uh, the manufacturers, in this case, Qualcomm, they have to make a call to invest engineering effort to take certain processes 
and make them available to us. And then our senior engineering team that works on the AI oriented things that we do can fine tune for the platform. Um, and there, I guess there's something else that's worth mentioning too. Um, we have a free version of our application. So it's again, making things available to people. It's a very fully featured version. So people can do a lot of work for no money. That's always a good thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that, you know, you have free version and that free version practically lets you do almost quite a lot of things, right? Yeah. Even basic color grading as well. Right? That's right. And uh, so now I want to shift gears a bit. Yeah. Like uh, it's been like uh, three days. Today is the third day and the last day of the Snapdragon Summit. And we've seen all the announcements right from the mobile platform to compute platform mm -hmm. to, you know, even the uh, sound platform for the yeah. TWS and headphones. And there was one thing that was consistent between those and that was AI, right? So uh, when we talk about DaVinci Resolve, what are the kind of AI tools that are there? Like uh, I kind of use a couple of them. One is where, you know, uh, there's a lot of ambient noise right now, right? We have a good mic which can capture our audio, but at the same time, uh, it can uh, sort of get rid of uh, all the wind noise and all, right? That, that's one thing. And then I also want a transcription of the same, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit and listen and type everything. Mm -hmm. There's just one click tool that does all the transcription with subtitles, right? Yep. So what are the kind of uh, these features that we can expect? And uh, with the NPU now in the picture, yeah. things and processing can be faster. So what right. can you tell us about that? Well, to clarify also for people who may not know the product that well, the paid version of DaVinci Resolve is called DaVinci Resolve Studio, which costs uh, 300 US dollars roughly. And then that, that contains all the AI tools. Right. So we, if we talk about some of the AI tools that are present in the software now, there are things like denoise, there are things like uh, re scene relighting, Okay. There's the ability, as you touched on, to do automatic subtitling and also editing or binding text. Right. And you can output the text for other usages. For audio, there's what's called voice isolation. You touched on that. Right. You could adjust the amount of isolation. And there's also a thing called dialogue leveler. And dialogue leveler is really great for people that are video editing or audio pros. Look, I just tapped my mic. I'm not an audio pro. When you do dialogue, a lot of times somebody's talking a little bit off mic, they turn their head, they do something, and you're sitting all the time putting in keyframes trying to equal that audio out. It does it automatically. Right. Um, there are all kinds of tools for the future that we can imagine where we'll be able to take tasks that are maybe not very exciting for people and make them a lot easier. You mentioned Magic Mask, where right. you can draw like a single line on an object or a person or anything and you can do a negative mask and darken it, change the background. You can color correct or color grade for the subject or parts of the person's face. These are really powerful features, but you can imagine, just imagine building on that, building on, we also have people detection. Not a lot of people know that about Resolve and that's a very powerful feature. So imagine if you can combine some of those types of things together, to be able to say, find me all the shots where we say this, where it's this type of, is it a close up? Is it, is it far? And you know that you can use that kind of power with AI is uh, really useful for creative people. Yeah, and uh, before we wrap this up, yeah. I have one last question. Yes. We touched upon AI, but uh, there is also on-device generative AI, right? Yeah. And that's turning out to be a very powerful tool. Right mm -hmm. now we have a background over here, mm -hmm. but uh, I want to replace that with a very blue sky or clouds so uh, what can you tell us about uh, the on-device kind of experiences yeah. that will come with the DaVinci Resolve platform? Yeah, right now DaVinci Resolve on the, on the pro side, there's a sky replacement tool that right. uses AI. And that, that's a good example of something where you can say, hey, this particular sky, the weather wasn't that great. And we want right. to be able to make it more of a blue sky with similar clouds and so forth. But uh, any number of things that you can that you're seeing in regular generative art oriented AI or an object oriented AI, you can imagine those types of things being available. But the important thing you've mentioned is on device. Right. One of the things that we feel strongly about is that you shouldn't need to be tethered to the cloud or play, pay for a cloud subscription to do things. 
And it's not saying that we would never have anything that's cloud related, but we'd like to be able to make those things possible for people working on their device and also working portable. So uh, I guess that's the most I can say because I can't talk about the specific things, but it gives right. you an idea of what we're focused on. So, yeah, I think with that, we can wrap this discussion. All right. And uh, thanks, thanks for, for talking, man. Yeah, same here. So hello to everybody and good luck. Hope you get to check out DaVinci Resolve yeah. on Snapdragon, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And good luck to you. Thank you. Right.